Today we have uh, two former campers and two former staff members from Camp Michelle, and this is going to be a rather free-ranging interview with a chance for these two gentlemen who haven't seen each other for 40 years to get caught up with each other and a, little, a chance for us to learn a little bit more about what Camp Michelle was like when it was a church camp. I'm also interested to learn any things that they were able to connect with that reached back to the former history of the camp, of the CCC camp and the POW camp. Um, first person is Gary Fisher. Uh, he was a camper there in the early 60s and then later a staff person in the later 60s. And Ken Koek is our other uh, interviewee today, and he was also there roughly in that same time period. Okay. So, gentlemen, Gary, would you start and tell us a little about, I'd like to start with your experiences as a camper first, and then we'll later on go into the, the staff. So, Gary, would you tell us about your memories of being a camper at Camp the Show? Uh, my recollections of being a camper, uh, I stayed in 51 and 52, and that's up there where the steps of nowhere are. And um, I had, uh, I can't, of course, I can't recall the, the names of my counselors, but one was a, an older gentleman one year, one, one week I was there, and then a younger man uh, later. Um, I discovered how to play uh, four corner ball. Never heard that game before. Learned how to do that. Um, also, I recall that uh, the water fountain up there by the the, um, uh, the boy shower. What would you call that, Ken? The uh, shower stalls or that outside shower yeah. confinement or whatever um, it was the coldest water. It was so cold you couldn't hardly drink it. I remember that. I uh, remember they had good meals at the mess hall. I remember um, the kids getting homesick and their parents would have to come and, and uh, pick them up. They would be there about one day and then they'd have to leave. Um, hiking on the AT, singing, making crafts, which is, here's one from when I was a, I didn't make this, but a friend of mine gave it to me at the, um, what was that called up there? The Arts and Crafts Center, yeah. Was that in a building? Yes, so yes. That, that was, I think that was probably the old German mess hall. Did it, was it T-shaped? I, I can't recall. I remember the man that was the art, the guy in charge of that, had a, had a, uh, a false leg, I remember. Isn't that funny how you remember that kind of stuff? I remember one of our projects was with, um, uh, we made candle, little little candle trays and at the end of the camp we lit them and we floated them out at the lower swimming uh, hole, down where the, uh, the, the, the original swimming pool. The lower reservoir. The low, yeah, the lower reservoir. The uh, other campers, the former campers I've talked to, have spoken about the camp being divided into the upper and lower sections one section for younger campers, another section for older campers. How was it divided, or was it, when you were there? Oh, I believe it was divided. Uh, the younger kids were the upper and the uh, older. So you were in the upper then? Yes. So you were? Yeah. So how old would you have been when you were there? Seven, well, eight, you maybe, eight, eight so or nine. So you didn't get homesick? No. <laughs> No, but I remember they did. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm like, well, really? You, you got to go home? This is pretty neat. But, um, Ken, yeah, what about you? What are your memories as a camper? I think a lot of that was determined by the number of campers. The upper camp had more barracks right. than the lower camp. The lower camp, camp only had one, didn't it? What? Didn't, wasn't there just one barracks down there? No, no. It was uh, Zwigli and Calvin? There was a small one. Calvin Annex. Yeah, Calvin Annex. There's right. Calvin, Calvin Annex, and then, yeah. Like I said, depending on the size of the camp, determined who got up or who got lower. 
Okay. And then, and then the uh, they had the city camp. Yeah, that was, was the, that was the big camp. That at was the, end. the big camp. They took the whole camp. That was like the third week of August. It was Pennsylvania city camp. The guy, I think I was in the other camp, but I was there when I was fourteen. And uh, so it may have been split differently. Yeah. At that, at that time. Like I said, depending on the size of the camp. Yeah. But yeah, food was always good. Of course, when you're that age, you eat almost anything. And then I remember, I remember all the activities there. They had us going everywhere: hiking, playing volleyball, crabs, swimming. The lower, the lower, down below, right, right. As you go into the camp. There was a lower field down there that had a softball diamond. We played softball. Like I said, there were two or three volleyball courts. Four, four corners. They had four corners. Inside the rec hall, inside the pavilion. They had four corners set up everywhere. Uh, and then every night was Vespers. Right. We went out to either the one above uh, where the Frontier Camp was or the one above where the Stuff's from nowhere. Stuff's right. from nowhere. Right. And then on Wednesday night. And they would sing taps too. I yeah. remember them singing taps. On Wednesday night, they served us a meal where we hiked to. Oh, so you were out for the night or just no, for no, the just, evening? Just for the evening. Just for the evening. We could serve a meal around 5 o'clock and then they'd all come back before they got to go. Did you go for more than one year as a camper? I just did one year. I don't think I was two or three, I believe. Because I know in the six on the website, I'm in uh, me and my brother in the I think it's 63 staff picture. Um, and um, I know I know at least I, I think two or three, okay. two or three weeks, yeah, or a year. So anything else from your camper years you think it's worth sharing before we switch to staff? It's a good time. You arrive on a Sunday afternoon. Right. And you left on Saturday morning. Right. Yep. Every camp face is that, that way. You arrive on Sunday afternoon and left on Saturday morning. And then we cleaned the camp while everybody was away. That was staff. That was while we were staff. Oh, that's okay. That's true. I'm, I'm jumping ahead. So well, let's, let's jump ahead. Um, I'm, I'm really interested in, in what the staff experience was like and, and also anything that that you saw, I know you brought an ammo box with you. Um, right. Anything that you saw that harked back to the CCC or the POW. But let's start just focus on staff for a minute. What was what was your jobs? Uh, did you like it? Did you stay more than one week? What? We were there for the whole summer. Yeah, um, yeah, we were. Yeah. We were there. Uh, I'm trying to remember. The last camp I think left on the Saturday of Labor Day. And we basically spent two days cleaning up and winterizing the camp because we worked until 5 o'clock on Labor Day. We finished up 5 o'clock on Labor Day and then everybody came home and backed up. Right. But I think the camp left Saturday and then we spent that day cleaning all the cabins and making sure Sweet the cabins yeah. which, which was a weekly thing. We did, when they left on Saturday, we did the trash run Swept them out, the swept the barracks out, um, uh, the bathhouses, yeah. cleaned those. Hosed them down. Yep. Went to the went to the garbage, went on a garbage run. Right. Of course, we did that on Wednesday too. Wednesday right. and Sarah's. We did and, a garbage and, uh, run down behind Laurel Lake. Right. Oh, I wonder. I know at one time there was a an incinerator there. Right. I understand it was taken out of service. So where was the the garbage dump then? Uh, down behind Laurel Lake. You went in, you went down past Laurel Lake, hooked to hooked to right, went back there on the old railroad bed. And mm -hmm. then up there to your left. Yep. Pulled up to the top and got the cans out, dumped them down over the edge. Now, the incinerator wasn't taken out of there until I think I think the beginning of sixty nine, I think. Well, okay. Because I even I remember. We, I remember that too. I remember we we set that puppy on fire and you'd have to get away from it because all the aerosol cans would blow up. We didn't, you know, you just went into the, into the barracks and 
dumped everything into a great big trash can, took it down there and dumped it in there, and then go down underneath it. And like it all. Yep. And then get away from it because you didn't know what was in there, what was going to blow up. You'd <laughs> sit there and watch it go. <laughs> We forgot we built we built bonfires. Oh yeah, yeah, that was one of our jobs Friday, too. Was it Friday night? They had the that would be yeah, close to the end of their camp. Yeah. They would they would request the bonfire. The directors would or that. Where did they have the bonfire? Down uh, by the ball diamond. Well, it was down by the ball diamond. I'm trying to think where the other one was. There was another. One. The other one was up there by the Upper Vespers. Yeah. The one above uh, the steps from nowhere. Yeah. There was a ring of ammo boxes. Um, yeah, they did have a circle. Circle of ammo boxes or made benches or whatever. So it was a, there was a bonfire there. And then for, I guess for the lower camp, it was down by the, um, yeah. the ball if field. You went, if you went in the lower camp where the sewage treatment facility mm -hmm. is, go past it, the ball diamond was right there. And then in the upper corner of the ball diamond, center field, far center field in the corner there, was the other barn fire. We uh we built a bonfire so big one time Mr. Hotley, the caretaker, came down and told us to take the top double cheer off of it. He didn't want to set the whole mountain on fire. <laughs> <laughs> now that was the year, that was the year that they were logging up there. Right. And we could go down to the log where they were logging and get all the slabs of wood. The slab wood from the sawmill, the rough cut mill. Mm. And that, that made some nice bonfires. Yeah. So the sawmill was still in operation back then? When Whatever outfit that was that came in there and logged. I'm talking about the, it would have been up beyond the upper reservoir or the water reservoir. Was. Right, yeah. right. It was, back so it was still in operation yeah. then. Yeah. Had mounds of the sawdust, remember that? Yes. And the girls were playing the sawdust. But one thing about it is you had to be careful because there was poison ivy. Yeah, there was poison ivy everywhere up there. I remember some of the girls getting poison ivy real bad. Staff? Or, or the kids? Staff. Oh. I remember I got a bed that one year I cut the, um, uh, we had that, our TV antenna on the old barn wall. And I got it in my head to um, do everybody a favor and cut that 100 or 200 year old vine of poison ivy that was growing up there. And I got poison ivy over everywhere. <laughs> you weren't as bad as Lee, though. No, Lee, 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 got, Lee, Lee was one of our staff members. He could walk by it and get it. Yeah. Yeah. Some people are, <laughs> all they need to do is have the wind blow the right way. <laughs> but yeah, we, uh, you know. Did you ever out the camp? Is this uh, the same way that you closed it up on Labor Day? <sighs> we got here, I think, Saturday. I know we had to, to uh, get the mattresses out of um, Michaud Lodge. Yeah. That was up up stored. They were stored up above in the attic or in the crawl space. Yeah, yeah. And we tossed them out of the. There was a a double window or something. Yeah. We or a door or something. I can't recall. On the end there. Yeah, and we threw them out and then take them out in the white bread truck and put them on the the bids on the. Basically, bed. opening up the camp. There wasn't really anything to do except for getting the mattresses out. Yeah. And then, of course, Frontier Camp, we had to put the Hogan's up and the TPs. Well, the TPs. I went up there, the summer of 67, I went up with Russ and Dave Robinson, Russ Weir and Dave Robinson. We built the platforms. We built the TPs and built the Hogan's. Or Hogan, yeah. 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 Getting the Frontier Camp ready. Yeah. Was the, the Pioneer Camp run all summer? I think so. I think so because uh, now it was it wasn't a big camp, it was a small camp, probably 40, 50 kids maybe. Yeah. But you had one off it. Because it, everything was if it rained that week it was I felt bad for those counselors and well the kids too because everything was wet. I remember the that. Kids were in the Hogan's. Yeah. The yeah. Were in the teepees. Right. And they didn't come down to the mess hall for meals? They had their own kitchens, if yeah. I remember. We had yeah, their it was it was it was like an old gas stove, little gas, right? Camping stoves, and then pots and pans, and uh, they had plywood uh, boxes or units that I don't know different. I under, think we took and stuff occasionally, but not very often. Mm -hmm. That was fun. frontier camping. What was yeah, that? it was it was true primitive. Yeah, true primitive camping. Well, they knew about restrooms out there. 
Did they have party parties out there? I want to say they did. I, I can't. They had to because I they. I remember for sure, but I think they had party parties lined up in groups. There were five TVs and eight Hogan's. Hey, your memory's better than mine. And I think they had three port parties at the upper part of it and then three port parties at the lower part. Oh, yeah, they were along uh, Bunker Hill Road, the lower part, yeah. I think. Yep. Now that you mentioned that, yep. So where, uh, where were you housed during the time that you were there? Trail Lodge. Trail Lodge. Trail Lodge, which is? If you go up the, if you go up into camp. The barn wall was in front of the barn wall. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, what would have been the POW officers' yeah. right. barracks building? Right. Was there much uh, remnants of, of uh, German occupation, or did you see any? Um, Vince asked me that question about the barracks, if there was any graffiti from the POWs or anything, and I. If there was, I can't recall. I don't think. I don't think there was because it was mostly painted over, probably painted over. Now the rec hall had paintings. Had the paintings. Had yeah. The, 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 the paintings. German POW paintings. Right. Yeah. Well, and some of the barracks had them on the walls, didn't they? Not when I was there. Not no. when I was there in staff. No. Nope. And I can't remember. I, don't remember. I think they were all. I they think were all down to lower rec. In the lower rec hall. Yeah. Gary, hold up John Land's book a second. Um, hold up so the camera can see it. That painting is one that we bought at an auction, and it came off the walls of an interior of one of the buildings. It wasn't a standalone painting. Uh, it was literally on the cellutex, so you don't, yeah. you don't remember that. Not, not in the Paris. Now, the lower rack, so they were on the cell text of the lower rack. Oh, they were? Oh, yeah. I mean, we have photos of the standalone paintings, but... Um, they, cut, they cut them out because the campers had started to deface them. Uh, right. right. And we stashed them in the, um, stored them in the lower girls' bathhouse in the furnace, in, in the boiler room, the yeah. little, little boiler room yeah. or whatever. They had, they had, the one, the one I remember specifically was the Statue of Liberty with Edward's face on it. Yeah, we have that. Now, now see, I, now I remember that one that had the spot sticker on it, but you're saying it had Hitler's face Hitler's on it? Face on it. Okay. That's, Maybe that's the same one. When we finish here, we can go up and take a look. Uh, it's hanging <laughs> up in the museum. Um, and it doesn't really have Hitler's face on it, but it is a strange configuration of, face of the face. But someone told me recently that there were two of them. That was me. Hitler's face and one. Uh, yeah, that was me. So that it could be that. Uh, yeah, there were, the the real record was lying. Right. Right. Yeah, we had photos with that. Right. But they were actually framed and hung on the wall. The ones that, that we have photos of. Yeah. I thought they were just panels. Like I don't remember them being framed. But I do I. Okay. Well, the one we have upstairs is framed. It okay. Has, okay. It was bought at the same auction where that, that one that when I just said to hold up. I'm sorry? When was it bought? 2005. Yeah. yeah. There was right. a collection of things that were sold at an auction that uh, a man, uh, Leroy Reed from Chambersburg, had collected over the years. Lots of stuff related to anywhere from World War I up to World War II and okay. military related stuff okay. that he had. When they closed the camp, I asked where the paintings had gone to, and nobody seen enough. That the only story we've we've heard one went to the camp Camp Hartman, I think it is, out in western Pennsylvania, that the UCCs had. So at least one or so of the paintings went out there, uh, and the rest of them went to the forestry office, and they didn't want them. So that's how we were. Wow. Okay. Yeah, I heard that they, that the majority of them ended up at the forestry office. Yeah. Yeah. That's where they went. Okay. Well, those ones that were pulled off the wall, I guess they were in that collection that also went right, right. down to the forest. Right. So were, you, were either one of you involved with the dismantling of the camp in 1972? No. No. So you weren't around for that. But you were there. You picked up some things. You had I went up there with um, Andy of Lifeguard, our, our friend Andy Reaper, and that's when the state pretty much came in with the bulldozer and wrecked havoc in there. The buildings were gone. 
Um, but the White House, the White House was still there. I believe it was the White House. And all the files, somebody had went in, all the camps. And a lot of this, I knew uh, the coffee pot from upper, rec, upper director's cabin, or barracks, that's where this came from. You recall that, up the little potbelly stove up there? Yeah. Now that's where that came from. And um, uh, I kind of wish I would have had a pickup truck out and loaded it up, but um, 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 I know I got that from there, and, um, um, but uh, somebody had gotten in there and just wrecked havoc inside yeah, of that place. It was not good. Yeah. Well, actually it was dismantled. Um, there may have been some use of, of, uh, of bulldozers, but there was an auction. Okay. And the buildings were sold, and if you bought one, you had to take it apart. Yeah. And take it away. So whatever buildings were still up. Now, Gary, you mentioned to me earlier that, in fact, you had a photo of it, that the um, that the building that had been the barracks that had been converted to the chapel right. was taken down during in your memory. Right. I'm waiting for him to recall a memory, but he's not saying anything. <laughs> no, he, he's there. forgotten. Was I there? Uh, yes, you were. Uh, you were up on the ladder. <laughs> <laughs> and, maybe, uh, I, maybe it's a memory I just passed. I think you did. And uh, I had this sledgehammer and uh, went to, to knock a section of the wall out or make it get it loose and it missed. And it swung around and and hit him in the derriere. That's why he does it. <laughs> and I knocked him off the ladder. You don't recall that? Yeah. Well, I did because I thought, oh, I said, maybe I just pressed that. So, yes, he was there. He was there. And what, that what, would have been about 69? It had to be. Yeah. It had to be. We took it apart. I think it was because it was condemned. They were, it was in bad shape. Yeah, it was in really bad shape. Right, right. It was. And they were afraid somebody would in there and fall. It, it would fall, yeah. 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 I know several buildings were taken down before that auction was held. Do you recall any others that you know of that were taken down around that time? When I was up there, it was pretty much all going. Um, well, that would have been after 75, that's mm -hmm, when the auction mm -hmm. was. Yeah. Were you ever there after the Michaud Lodge burned? Well, uh, I recall the first time we would go up, was it the day after Christmas? Was you ever on that where we, we, we would, uh, whoever could get away, came up and stayed up at Michaud Lodge because that building had heat in it. Yeah. Right. And we would stay, what, a long weekend, if I remember? Three or four days. Yeah. It was, it was like the day after Christmas, right, so like right. the 29th and the 30th, right. and then you'd go home. And so I did it one year, and the next year I wanted to do it, and I think that's when it burned. The, it burned in March the, of 70, so okay, it would have been around that. The furnace caught on fire or whatever, yeah. and burned it down. I remember, I remember the, one year, the one year I was there, the one year I was there, we were at Michaud Lodge. We hiked up to Chimney Rocks in Bermuda shorts and t-shirts. It was that warm the day after, the, the week after Christmas. I, I, I didn't catch that. That must have been 60. Because it was cold when I was there. That must have been 67, 68. Okay. Because I know we roller, or roller skated. I skated on the, uh, the, the reservoir. The reservoir. And it was like Hans Brinker in the Silver States. I mean, we just skated right on up through the run through there until you, until the ice stayed, mm -hmm. you know. That's great. Yep. It was that cold. I remember that. But see, what I don't understand is why they didn't convert it to an RV park. Convert the, the whole camp. State couldn't find anybody who wanted to take it on. Because you had you had an Olympic sized swimming pool. Yeah. You had a state of the art sewage system. Yeah. You had bathhouses, you had pavilions. Yeah. Yeah. And mess hall. You had a mess hall, you had you know, you had volleyball courts, you had So those facilities were all still pretty in good shape by sixty nine. Oh yeah. So when you were there. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. That that Olympic sized pool was wonderful. Spring fed. Cold. Cold. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was cold. I got my, I got my Red Cross uh, life saving certification in that swimming pool. I had to say, Dave. Uh, I had to say, Bob Robinson. <laughs> He's a big man. He was. 
Bob was <laughs> linebacker, football linebacker type. <laughs> and I was, you know, it's all a picture of me. I was a skinny kid. He fought me every which way. I remember he came out of there. I had a nothing right there like that. He came out of there. He had a great big red mark there. But he fought me every which way. How did they use the, uh, the original swimming pool during the time after the, the new pool was built? The one, the lower one. The lower one. Well, they have to say we floated, we floated like lit candles out. Yeah. And, and uh, we'd sing around, they'd march us around the edge of it, we'd sing and... Yeah. There was no swimming. Well, I knew there was no swimming. I mean, they wouldn't have allowed that, but I didn't know if there was any kind of boating or... No, mm -hmm. there wasn't really a boat. Mm -hmm. It was just, the whole time I was there, it was just there. Yeah. I don't even, you know, I, I think occasionally I saw uh, the manager of the camp, the first two years I was there. Well, they would fire up the pump house every yeah, now Gilman, and then. Gilman, Gilman, Gilman Willier, I think his name was, he had his three kids were up there. I think they fished in occasion. But I didn't know whether they were any fish in it or not. But they fish in it. Well, they're, they're trout in that stream, so yeah. it's, it's possible. And so they did, that was, but other than that, and floating, like I said, floating candles on it. Yeah. And floating big boats. Yeah. Know, yeah. Okay. So it could be used for that kind of activity, but not, not any kind of water. Right. No. Mm -hmm. Water sports or anything. Now, water basically came out of that upper reservoir, wasn't it? Wasn't that yeah. our drinking water? Upper drink, upper yeah, reservoir was drinking yeah. water. Yeah. Yeah. It came down to the pump house and then. Right. Was, right. Did you ever go up to those tanks where the water was stored? Not really. No, it was, it was beyond the. The yeah. one Vesper Hill. Yeah, it was snaky up there, if yeah. I recall. There was some copperheads or something up there. I didn't even go up there. I'm, we'd go on up past there where the AT would come out. Yeah. yeah. But uh, the tanks, mm -mm, I wouldn't go up there. I know um, Bill Hockley and uh, they would go, David Clark would go up there and yeah. service it or whatever. But Were you there the summer that that kid walked into? The utility cabin with that copy head wrapped around his. I heard about it. Yeah, it got bit. No. Oh, he didn't get bit. No, he caught it. Okay, because I know one one of the kids found a uh, rattlesnake and it it nailed him. We had, we were getting ready to go to work one morning, and this kid, probably 12, 13 years old, walks up to us and said, "Can you tell me what kind of snake this is?" He has it in his hand, and it's wrapped around his arm. And I said, well, son, that's a copperhead. He didn't bite you, did he? He said, no. I said, well, you should love to love him. He says, he said, I live out against the North Mountain. I catch them all, catch rattlesnakes all the time. I know I catch a snake. <laughs> so we uncurled it. And I said, drop it. He dropped it, and we cut off his head. But we had snakes. We had a young lady come running up into the office. Cattle and I were running the store. Came in and said, We have a snake down here right on the step to our barracks. So, you know, we locked up the store and ran down. And uh, we killed the snake. I chopped the rabbits off of it. And she said, What kind of snake is it? And can I have the rabbits? All in the same breath. <laughs> <laughs> uh, rabbit snake. <laughs> but, so the camp was pretty well infested with snakes? No. Yeah. No, but they, it, it was it was a rare occurrence actually to get a snake in the area. Right. Right. As a matter of fact, the copperhead that he caught, he actually caught it out on one of the trails out outside the camp. Uh, the rattlesnake that I just told you about is the only one I can remember. You, you and you and uh, Allison were on the AT. Oh, that was on the Appalachian Trail. Yeah, that's what I remember that one. You brought it in to trail. That was on the Appalachian Trail. Though. Right, right. And it was moonlit or something. It was it was out in the middle of the trail. You guys are lucky. No, it was. It was. Well, I walked up on it. What? 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 Yeah, Allison, yeah. I remember that. That's on the Appalachian Trail. Now, the only other snake I knew of in camp actually was in a frontier camp. 
Now there was a big black snake down. I was, wow. I was on KP at the mess hall, and, and a kid came in and said, "There's a big snake out here," and it, it was the biggest black snake I ever saw. Well, black snakes can do anything. Right, right. I just he, we got him away from there. Yeah, but uh, <clears throat> I do remember the frontier camp. One of the directors came in, came in, or one of the cameras came in and said, "We have a snake out at the frontier camp. We don't know what it is. You need to come out and take care of it." So we were running out there to take care of it, and there's the Directed to the frontier camp, big burly guy with a shovel. And the kids were all surrounding him. He was there bending off this copperhead snake. It was about that long. <laughs> I asked him why. Just still so poisonous, but. <laughs> yeah, I asked him, I said, why didn't you just kill it with a shovel? And he said he was afraid it was. A friendly rub the hand with a shovel might. So it, it, but, but other than that, I don't really remember. Well, so your cousin uh, Lee, Lee, remember one followed him. He yeah. was he was walking down uh, Bunker Hill Road, and it was gravel then, I believe. Yeah. And he kept hearing the noise behind him, and he turned around with his flashlight, and nothing. And finally, he looked down, and this copperhead was following him. I remember that. Interesting. And uh, we decided we were going to. Well, we ate a. Didn't we eat a rattlesnake up there? The one that you caught. No. I. Now the rattlesnake wasn't big, but the copperhead was terrible. I didn't, I didn't eat the rattlesnake. Okay. We had cameras. We had cameras that would go out and catch them and bring them in. When we had the camp, the camp had nothing to do with it. But we let them use the kitchen. If they wanted to cook a rattlesnake, it, you know. I know, I know the, the rattlesnake tasted pretty good. It was like frog legs, I remember. But uh, the copperhead, eh, that, was a, that was a bad idea. But uh, uh, what else? What do you remember about the recreation building? That, that's the one building, whether it was CCC or POW or church camp, it was always the recreation building. It never changed its use. They had four, four, four corners. Things laid out in it, that record. In it, on the floor? On the floor. Right. They had. The camp store was on the one end. The camp store, I, you got a picture of the camp store. Mm -hmm. The camp store was on the one end at the fireplace, and the upper, the upper section, I think there was a pool table there, wasn't there? Or a ping pong table? Ping pong. Ping pong. Ping pong table, it wasn't a pool table, it was a ping pong. Ping pong table on the upper, right. upper right. part of it. Yep. But yeah, it was, you know, that was a gathering place for mm -hmm. the campers. If they had free time, they were either in the rec hall or in one of the pavilions. And I think post office was there when that were the kids dropped off their um, goodbye stamps at the store and, and yeah. dropped their postcards off or letters. And the public telephone was on the end of that building. Yeah. Uh, for at least one year that I was there, we had there was a public phone there. Um, Pictures show a piano in there. Did they have? Oh yeah, there was a piano in there. Uh -huh. No, but it, there was a piano. Maybe it was used, maybe the camp was used it, but I don't remember being used that much. What did they do for a chapel once they took the chapel down? Up the, the Vesper Hills. Oh, just, just the outer yeah, one. They, they, I, don't, I don't remember them ever using uh, the chapel as a chapel. There was pews in it, and uh, uh, isn't that the building that had the stage in it or something? There was a raised area yeah, on it? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, we yeah. have photographs. Okay. okay. It had actually had chairs. I didn't see any pews, but maybe they brought that in. Yeah, somebody I got that. I don't think, like I said, I don't, I don't think I ever saw it used as a chapel. No. Now, if it was raining and they had vespers, they used the pavilions. Right, right. What was the, uh, and maybe you didn't get in these buildings, but either the either of the places where the caretaker, year-round caretakers lived. You ever get in those buildings to see you know, I never got into Bill, I was never invited into Bill Hopley's place, not. but I, I did manage to get into Clark Eckermaid's place, the Deer Lodge, yeah. the old uh, farmhouse. Yeah, uh, that was just, you know, it was just ordinary, there wasn't anything special about it. Had a kitchen and a bathroom and yeah. all that. Mm -hmm. And a fireplace, I know I've seen the Yeah, Clark was, Clark was... That was the first time I ever saw a big flock of turkeys. I didn't know what those big birds were. I remember that. I thought, my Lance, what? And he fed them. He put corn or something out for them. And he remember he had the big ear. Remember it was that he had like a, a satellite dish on a tripod and he, he would listen to them or listen to wildlife or 
I remember seeing him do that, but he pretty much stayed out to himself. Yeah. Um, but I tell you what, I don't know how old he was, but he could work you to death. Clock after Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. So he was in charge of you too. He he pretty much ran the uh, the, the large tractor with the um, the big mower, the yeah. bush hog on the back, and made the big fields and pretty much. And we pretty much mowed around the barracks or painted or whatever else they had us do. Uh, like you I say, there? were you there? We painted the barracks inside and out. No, I was there to catch the the paint and the uh, addition onto the mess hall that utility rid. We painted the inside of the barracks. All of them. All of them. No, I, I missed that. I mean, up there. <laughs> With those, I mean, it would just have been open rafters in there. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> That's probably why all the graffiti was gone. Well, that? Well, you know, I, this was, this was probably, they probably painted them once before. Probably. But they were, they were kind of dingy gray. Yeah. They probably painted them after the, after World War II was over. And when we painted them in 60, Six or fifty-seven. Right. It's probably the first time they've been painted since then. Probably, yeah. Mm. But we got utility red paint. Yeah, it was it was uh, utility red. Yep. It went on red, but it turned to a dull brown. I remember. Yeah. Um, well, that sounds like hard work. <laughs> yeah. Well. Yeah. Sixteen, seventeen, eighteen years old. You can. It was just. Painting was probably the toughest job of all. Mowing was fun, but you had to be careful. And then we had, uh, I was telling the crew that uh, the honeybees got into the one barracks. Remember that? Where the, and we uh, had to get the bees out of that barracks. That was interesting. And as far as I know, nobody got stung, but those bees weren't, weren't happy. I remember that. Um, Do you recall the, um, I've asked, uh, the, the, um, somewhere in the camp somebody found or brought out of retirement the Army, it was a U.S. Army two-man hand cart, like, a, like you put garbage cans, it was like a rickshaw looking thing. Yeah. Whatever happened to that? I don't know. Somebody, I mean, that, the, the kids started playing on it and then it disappeared. It, it, I don't know where it went, but I never saw it again. But it had U.S. Army on the side of it, metal wheels. So some of your job involved getting in those garages and, and workshops on the east end of the camp, then, since you were doing that kind of... Not really. Well, we reported down to the wood shop yeah. to get our assignments, either that or the trickle filter. That was those, a, those garages were basically Cook Township garages. Oh, not part of camp show. Not part of camp show. Well, the one had the fire truck in it yeah. and canned goods. I, rem I remember that because it was heated. Yeah. I remember on the one end, it was cinder block. But a lot of those garages, that's where Cook Township had their trucks and everything. So a lot of that was, you know, was down. We didn't, we didn't do too much in there. So which of the utility buildings did the camp use that? The, the workshop, you said. Well, the workshop. When you pulled in, the, the garages were over here. When you pulled in, the workshop was right in front of you. Mm -hmm. Right up here. You went, did you go between them back to Clark's house? Or yeah, you went between them and then the lane. the garages and then you had the workshop back to Clark's house. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah. The garages off of Bunker were, Hill. Yeah, the garages were down from where Trail Lodge was. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You're right, there were snow plows or trucks or something yeah. that Cook County was in there. Yeah. And, and where did they keep the fire truck? In, in one of those garages? It was in the center block building on, and, the, on, on the, the very end, end yeah. um, close to where De uh, Deer Lodge was on that, that building because it was heat and any canned goods from the previous summer was stored in there because it wouldn't freeze. Um, and it, I think that was an old, I, I don't even know what year that fire truck was, but I remember that famous fire drill we had 
and we ended up going to the trolley top in it. I remember that coming off the mountain. You remember that, Kenny? Yeah. Yeah, that was something. The trolley top was there then. Yes. 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 Did you have to walk through Tolbert? Oh yeah, I had uh, uh, told them. I had to walk. Uh, they got me. That was a ha uh, a hazing thing, or not a hazing thing, but a, the rookies got called oh, to walk through Tolan. Yeah, yeah. We. Uh, if you spoke after you cross going down, <laughs> if you spoke after you cross the bridge in Tolan, all the way down, if you said anything till we got out of Tolan, when we came back, they made you walk through. And of course, the people that lived there were all out on the front porches, and they, they, they knew what was going on, I guess, because we I think it was every summer. Okay. Right? You know, I got sent, I had to walk through the town for saying two words. I, I know I worked it. I, I, I walked it one time, and after that, they didn't get me. First work. year, first year, I said, I said, I walked. We drove through it. And I went, big town. <laughs> and that's all I said. Uh, and when we came back, they pulled over the side of the road. We were in a pickup truck. Pulled yeah. over the side of the road. They, they said, you got to walk through the town. I said, what are you talking about? I said, it's initiation. That's right. Yep, initiation. Interesting. Yeah. I forgot about that. Mm. So what else do you have to share with us there, Gary? What are we uh, all these goodies are... Um, uh, of course, the camp songbooks. Yeah, a few of those. And a uh, uh, camera from back in the day. Um, porcelain doorknob and uh, uh, wire insulator that I picked up on one of the trips up there. Do you recognize this? What do you know of that? It's not the, it's not the original. Oh. It's a, it's a, looks like the original. I don't know where the original went. This was used in the pool for winter temperature. And, it, and, and my lands, I, 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 uh, I, I, I'm trying to find, uh, I saw it somewhere and I picked it up and I went, my God, that's it. But it's not the original, but that's, that's it, that's it. Um, the light birds would use it for the temperature of the water and then when they did the, uh, Chlorine and, and everything did the, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Were you ever down in the pump house for the, for the swimming pool? Down, down below? Down oh yeah, where the filter is and yeah. everything? Oh yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, you talk about probably stink infested now. I'm not going down there. A lot of water in it now. And that one, that's, that when, when it gets real rainy up there, you can hear the water running. Through it. Okay. Well, yeah. That's where they. That's where they went wild with the bulldozer because they dumped stuff in the pool. Well, all the all the concrete pads around the pool, they pushed them into the pool. That I think there was one of the old uh, gas stoves out of the mess hall ended up in there, if I recall. Yeah, it's not there anymore, but I think it just probably finally dissolved. But it yeah. was it was visible for many yeah. many years. Um, also, while I get back to my uh, artifacts here. Um, here are the keys to the mess hall. I still have them, Kenny. I never had keys to the mess hall. Well, this came, these keys came from the, the old log building that was the gas station when you turned into Bunker Hill, and, yeah. and it was falling down then, and the only thing that was holding that up was the poison ivy vines. And there was a, a plywood plaque on the wall, and it had the nails and keys on it, with every barracks on there. You remember you remember the hornet's nest we took out of that tree right from it? Yes I do. Yep. Yes I do. And uh, uh, were you the one that threw the rock in the hornet's nest on the trail? You remember that, don't you? Oh yeah, I remember that. Because I was the one I was the one standing inside the screen door. <laughs> yeah, the hornet's nest <laughs> in one of the pine trees. Right across the the road from Trail Lodge. So he goes out, and I wanted to hold the screen door shut, but I didn't. He goes out, throws a rock at it, comes running to it. I swung the door open, pulled the shut real quick, and the hornets bounced off the screen door, kept chasing him. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, yeah, I remember that. 
Yeah, I know you do. And uh, I'm trying to remember the story about the Viet Cong sandals from Vietnam. We got a box of them, wasn't it? Somebody had a, a brother or something that was stationed over there and... I, I don't think I got any because my feet were too big. Uh, I don't know, there was all sizes. I know there was a, that they still had the, the, the uh, red clay on them when we got them. Um, and then we wore them around and, and of course wearing this uh, inner tube, it turns your ankles black and your feet black from wearing them. But uh, like I say, I could, well, I don't know if I'd want to put them on it now, but you could, I guess. Um, like I said, the coffee pot from Upper Directors, uh, Andy Reaper's, Reaper's uh, lifeguard whistle. Yep. Yeah. Uh, what else? Of course, the the uh, thing from the the craft from the uh, when I was a camper. Uh, I think the ammo box. box. Oh, the ammo box. This I don't know if the camera's got it or not. But this is a, one of the I guess the last one. I don't know, but um, uh, there was a million of these laying yeah. around, and we burned them. We made bass. Uh, Benches out of them, or the kids would sit on them individually. Um, uh, when I found that one, it was full of uh, nuts and bolts, and it must have came out of the Cook County garage. And I just went, "Oh my lands!" and I liberated it. So, but uh, yeah, that, there was we had an excess supply, a surplus supply of these from. Yeah. Um, you remember anything else military that had been left that was still in the church camp besides those? Well, you knew where the guard towers were. Yeah. And the bases were still there. For the bases were still there, yeah. Right. You knew where those were. You could run, we, after being there a while, you could run across the camp in the dark and jump every ditch in the camp <laughs> because you knew where they were. Mowing grass, yeah. you knew yeah. exactly where they yeah. were. Yeah. We used to go swimming at the curfew. No. And nobody said too much about it, but the camp manager, at least the first two years I was there when I was on work, the camp manager would go swimming and he never said anything about it. But we'd go breakfast the next morning and he'd say, Why was your midnight swim last night? <laughs> I can't remember that combination of that lock. I used to remember it, but I can't anymore. Not much happened up there that the managers didn't know about. Uh, by manager, you mean the church camp people or the people like Hockley or, or Eckenberg? Uh, no, they were the caretakers. Right. Now, Dave Robinson and Russ, and Russ were the manager of the camp, the workforce. Okay. Dave Robinson was the manager, Russ was the assistant manager. We, we as a work crew, worked for Russ. Yeah. Gilbert, Gilbert, Gilbert Willier. Something like that. Gilbert, Gilbert Willier. His first name was Gilbert Willier, was the manager the first two years I was there. He was from Westminster, Maryland. Mm -hmm. He's the one, no matter what you did, he knew. Now, I, I had, I had, had hay fever which I'm still struggling right now. Went to Tennessee for 32 years and went away, come back to Pennsylvania, I got it again. But I was walking down to the nurses' quarters, because the nurses' quarters was down uh, right across the street from the mess. From the dining hall. Right. Yeah, the dining hall. Because I was having problems. I was dressed in, you know, a white shirt and light colored shorts. It was after curfew. And there was somebody that I ran into, one of the campers I ran into, we were standing there talking. And uh, I think one of the managers came, I think it was, was Dave. And because uh, I was out after curfew and that was basically no uh, And I said, just on general principle, I was one of the nurses' office, I was valid, valid reason, but just on general principle, I wouldn't be able to catch me. <laughs> So the camper and I took off. Well, he went after the camper because he thought being on the work crew, nobody would dress in white, light colored clothes. They would dress in dark because when we went out at night, we always dressed in dark clothes because it was tough to see. 
No, I remember running the uh, Appalachian Trail barefooted. On Sundays, I'd run the trail, run over to uh, the Lean Twos. Um, what was that? Tom, uh, can't remember the name of the Lean Twos. Yeah, over there, there off, of, off the AT. And yeah. then the, the um, what's the trail that swings on? Sunshine Trail or Sunset, Sunset Trail. Sunset Trail. Sunset Rocks, yes. uh, that's it. Um, used that's to be. Down, down past the upper reservoir. Right, and then. Off the Appalachian Trail. Mm -hmm. And we'd uh, take the bread truck and uh, the kids would camp back to the lean-tos and we'd uh, run that white bread truck and have, um, what was it, orange drink and uh, barbecue sandwiches yeah. or steamers yeah, or whatever. Wednesday night, that was the Wednesday night. Um, ice cream, they had the, um, the three flavored wedges of ice cream, strawberry, vanilla, and chocolate. And then that was packed in dry ice, and I, I know that every time I went on that run, I would put the dry ice in the little stream that would run down there, and the kids would, you know, would smoke and go down through there. I remember doing that. Um, that was a Wednesday night meal. We took them, depending on where they wanted to hike, is when where we delivered the meal to. Mm -hmm. I remember the worst, the, the strangest place, and I, I never knew it existed. But there's a back road up to Posty above Laurel Lake that pass mm -hmm. down there past the old landfill where yeah. we took the garbage and yeah. go out around. We we went up there. I we never took a, we no, took a meal up there. I never had the pleasure for that run. But by a lot of times they hike the Appalachian Trail down the Pine Road Furnace down to the old store, mm -hmm. the old store down there, and we deliver a meal there. Yeah. Kids, uh, I think it was because uh, the counselors were there all summer, also. Yeah. And they would, uh, I think they had a running contest or something. You recall we had to move those little, those steel heavy stoves. There was like individual little camping areas along uh, Tom's Run, up past the uh, reservoir. There was, and they would line the the, the trails were lined with stones and. Uh, Moss and uh, ferns, and uh, and it was almost uh, like a calendar picture. Some of them, they, they uh, the counselors would get the kids to improve those sites. Yeah. Um, yeah. The last year I was there, they had permanent counselors that were there all summer long. Yeah. Sixty-nine, I think. Did they have it in seventy? I can't remember what they. Uh, were. I can't. Even, I wasn't there in seventy. Oh, that's right. But I know sixty-nine. There were permanent campers. I mean, uh, counselors. I think there were three of each, three male, three female. For the whole camp? Yeah, they just, if they couldn't get enough campers, I mean, if they didn't have, if a camp came in without enough counselors, enough counselors, mm. they filled in. So, uh, okay, so, so there were permanent counselors at the camp, but then each camp from whatever church yeah. Had, yeah. Would, would bring additional staff. Right, right. Yeah, one of them, uh, uh, Sam, do you recall Sam? No, nah, the only one I recall is Larry because he almost got me in trouble. Well, uh, Sam and uh, Andy, um, Sam, how was it? Well, I, I guess I, maybe this will be edited out of the, out of the film because I'm telling you. <laughs> but uh, Sam, Sam got, got a raccoon. Oh. You know the story I'm going to say? And Andy, got a snake, I think it was a rattlesnake. And the, the idea was they were both gonna skin these animals out and uh, the rattlesnake was gonna become a belt or a uh, something and the, uh, the raccoon was, wanted to skin. Well that, you know, it was a lot of wishing and it never got done, but what do you do with it? Well, they decided that uh, the bottom of the ice cream cooler and the, and the, and the uh, gift shop was a good place. And they put it all the way in the bottom then thinking that, you know, we, they'd get to it eventually. 
Well, you know the story, the ice cream supply went low and uh, whoever had duty, I know they got in trouble for that. And um, I don't know what Sam did with his raccoon, but I know what Andy did with his snake and he was in a plastic bag and he just tossed it underneath one of the barracks. You remember that? And of course it... Yeah. It, Guess what? That came. You're the guy that went in and got it. I was the one that went in and had put out from underneath the barracks and get rid of it. Okay. I know it was, it was awful. Awful. <laughs> I bet. <laughs> and, and we got a lecture on uh, if you can't do that. Of course, we didn't do it, right, Ken? No. We didn't do anything up there. But um, anyway, uh, what else? Uh, there was a, a pump organ, I remember, an old uh, pump organ that was up there that disappeared. Where was it? What building? Whew. Oh, it might have been in the chapel. I want to say it was in the chapel. Yeah, that would make sense. Was it? Yeah, but it was gone. Yeah, it just... I know it still it, worked, you could get it to... Yeah, it was gone, it was gone, but nobody seemed to be too upset about it, so I think between... Mr. Hockley, Clark, Dave Robinson, Russ Weir, yep. and somebody else, I think they knew where it went to mm. because nobody really got upset about it. Right. Same way with that army cart, that hand cart. That kind of disappeared too. I don't know where that went. Because they, I think they wanted to just get it out of the chapel because they knew they were going to mess with it. Well, they didn't tear it down. They yeah. just needed to get it down. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you for coming in. It's been, it's been a pleasure.